Today we are going to study about a very important concept of photosynthesis that is chemi osmotic hypothesis. What is this called as? This is called as chemi osmotic hypothesis. This was proposed by Peter Michel. Who is the person who proposed this? It was proposed by Peter Michel. You should remember this name and it was somewhere done in 1961. So what is, who proposed chemi osmotic hypothesis? Peter Michel, year was 1961 and what was explained in this hypothesis data? It was explained that how ATP synthesis takes place in photosynthesis and also in respiration. We said ATP is produced as a product of photosynthesis and also as a product of respiration. So how this is produced was explained by Peter Michel in 1961 and this hypothesis is called as chemi-osmotic hypothesis. In the beginning you may find it a bit confusing but if you try to understand, listen 2-3 times to the same video, you will be able to understand better. Okay, let us start about chemi-osmotic hypothesis. I have already told you Peter Michel 1961. Reason, what was this hypothesis given for? It was given to explain the ATP synthesis in photosynthesis and in respiration. See beta. Synthesis of ATP is directly linked to the development of a proton gradient across the thylakoid membrane of a chloroplast. There is a direct relationship between the synthesis of ATP and a proton gradient. Whenever I say gradient, I mean there is a higher accumulation of something at one place and a lower accumulation at the other place. We say a gradient has been created. <coughs> gradient has been created means, <coughs> supposing I have two sections, 10th A and 10th B. I put 100 students in 10th A and there are only 25 students in 10th B. Automatically what would be the requirement? What would be the need of the R? It would be very simple that I need to shift the students from the section which have a higher number to the section where the students are lower in number. I would say, oh, a gradient has been created. So I need to shift. So what is gradient? Difference in the concentration of the same thing at two different places. So here we are going to talk about the concept, this gradient of protons. He said very directly that the synthesis of ATP is directly linked to what? It is linked to the development of a proton gradient. There is a proton gradient which is created across the thylakoid membrane of the chloroplast. Across the thylakoid membrane means inside the thylakoid membrane and outside the thylakoid membrane. The number of protons are different. That means there is a gradient of protons across the thylakoid membrane. In simple words, if you understand or imagine, you think about a thylakoid, think about the two membranes, you know that a thylakoid has two membranes, inner membrane and outer membrane. So there is a difference in the amount or the number of protons inside the thylakoid and outside the thylakoid membranes. This is what we call as a proton gradient. According to Michel, this difference in proton gradient is the main cause why ATP is synthesized. He also said that there is a direct relation. Means the more the proton gradient, the higher will be the rate of production of ATP. I hope I am clear. What is causing it? Very simple, the proton gradient. When I say proton gradient, I mean, think about a thylakoid. It has got two membranes, inner membrane and outer membrane. The number of protons inside the membranes, that is a lumen. The central part of the thylakoid in the uh, space between the two membranes is called lumen. So the number of protons in the lumen and the number of protons outside the membrane is different. There is a proton gradient that causes the synthesis of ATP. Now I told you ATP is produced both in photosynthesis and respiration. What is the main difference between both of them? The main difference is that photosynthesis and respiration both ATP is synthesized but the difference comes in the location where the accumulation of protons takes place. Though ATP is synthesized in both beta, in photosynthesis also in respiration also. Then where does the difference come from? The difference comes where protons are accumulated. See, in photosynthesis, chloroplast, we are talking about photosynthesis, we are talking about chloroplast. The accumulation of protons take place across in the thylakoid lumen. Where does it take place? Accumulation, where do protons deposit? In the lumen of the thylakoid. Lumen means to beach ki jagar, khali jagar, beach ki, inside the thylakoid. Thylakoid has membranes, two membranes, so you imagine 
एग शेप स्ट्रक्चर ओवल शेप स्ट्रक्चर दिखता है थोड़ा थोड़ा थैलोपाइड सो यू थिंक अबाउट एन एग शेप स्ट्रक्चर विथ टू मेम्ब्रेन एंड बीच की जो खाली जगह है दैट इज वॉट इन कॉल ल्यूमिन सो इन फोटो सिंथिस दैट इज इन क्लोरोप्लास्ट द प्रोटोन्स आर डिपॉजिटेड इन द ल्यूमिन ऑफ दी थैलोपाइड बट इन माइटोकॉन्ड्रिया दैट इज इन रेस्पिरेशन दिस अकर्स इन द इंटर मेम्ब्रेन स्पेस वेन आई से इंटर मेम्ब्रेन स्पेस आई नीड द स्पेस बिटवीन द टू मेम्ब्रेन आई होप आई एम क्लियर This difference comes where the protons are accumulated. See, beta, in photosynthesis, protons will be accumulated in the lumen of the thylakoid, but the thylakoid के अंदर जो खाली जगह है, and in mitochondria, protons are accumulated in the intermembrane space. That is the space between the two membranes. Now, the question arises <coughs> that what causes the proton gradient? ये तो समझ में आता है, very clearly कि there is a proton gradient. Number of protons कहीं पे ज़्यादा है, कहीं पे कम है. Is it okay? Jada protons where? I already told you in photosynthesis in the lumen. Remember the word lumen? Beach ki jo jaga hai, thylakoid ki. That is lumen. So in photosynthesis it occurs in the lumen of the thylakoid. And in mitochondria that is in respiration, protons get accumulated in intermembrane space. There are two membranes, the space between the membranes. Now we have been talking about the proton gradient. We need to find out. What causes the proton gradient? There are many reasons. Maybe I tell you there are three reasons what causes the proton gradient. Let me take them one by one. First is water molecule splits into the inner side of the membrane. The protons, <coughs> when I say protons, I mean hydrogen ions, which are produced by the water splitting, get accumulated within the thylakoid lumen. This is very simple. Splitting of water came out of that. Splitting of water was taking place in the lumen. <coughs> that means inside that khali space of the thylakoid. Now, when water splits, I told you electrons were produced, protons were produced, and oxygen gas was released. So, first point is very simple. Can't say I put out water by splitting of water, and where will they be? They are already in the lumen. Clear, everybody? First point, I said that many sari protons deposit are there. Where are they getting deposited? They are getting deposited in the lumen of the thylakoid. So, where are they coming from? The first point, where are they coming from? Splitting of water. We know that the splitting of water takes place on the inner side of the membrane. Membrane ki inner side that means inside the lumen. So inside the lumen, the splitting of water will take place. Obviously, water produces electrons. I also told you protons. When I mean protons, I mean hydrogen ions. So there are so many protons which will be produced by splitting of water, and they will accumulate within the lumen of the thylakoid. I hope first point is clear. Can't say I protons. Splitting of water took place, and protons are produced. Splitting of water was taking place in the inner side of the membrane, that is inside the lumen. So protons are produced. Now the second one. Protons have already come from splitting of water; they are already in the lumen. Second, now where do the protons come from? Transportation of protons takes place across the membrane when the electrons move through photosystems. Now there are some protons which will come through photosystems. First of all, so they have already come. They have come by splitting of water. Come का कोई question ही नहीं है because the splitting of water took place in the lumen only. So protons are already there. Second one बेटा, proton transportation is going to take place now. First case there was no transportation because splitting of water took place inside the lumen. In the second case, protons will be transported and where will they come from? They will come from photosystems. The primary acceptor of the electrons is located towards the outer side of the membrane. If you remember the primary acceptor. The first one to accept the electrons. You remember when sunlight falls on the photosystem, some electrons get excited, and an electron acceptor accepts them. That acceptor was known as the primary acceptor. So the primary acceptor of the electrons, where is it located? It is located towards the outer side of the membrane. This will transfer the electrons to the proton carriers and not to the electron carriers. See, beta, here we have a little bit of confusion. What happens is when light falls on a particular photosystem, you know it is PS2 in the beginning. Electrons get excited. Who takes those electrons? Electron acceptor takes those electrons. As a rule, electrons should have been transferred to whom? To an electron carrier. But this primary acceptor does not transfer the electrons to electron carrier. Rather, it transfers these electrons to proton carrier. It transfers it to whom? It transfers it to proton carrier. So this molecule, while it was transporting an electron, actually it was supposed to transport an electron. It is removing a proton from the stroma. 
Now it is removing, it, it is taking what? It is removing a electron C beta. It was transporting an electron, but what is it doing actually? It is removing a proton from the stroma. So there is a release of proton which takes place into the inner side of the thylakoid. That means in the lumen of the membrane. So more protons have come. Where have the more protons come from in the second case I told you? Photosystem 2, light will fall, electrons will get excited. Electrons will be taken by primary acceptor. This primary acceptor of electrons <coughs> should have passed it on to whom? Should have passed it on to an electron transporter, but it passes on to a proton carrier. What will this proton carrier do now? Of course, it has to transport an electrons, but it will also remove a proton from the stroma. So, the second type of electrons which are coming in the lumen are coming from the stroma. They will also come into the lumen. Where are they coming from? They are coming from the stroma. Who is bringing them? The primary electron acceptor had passed on those electrons to a proton carrier. So, this proton carrier will bring protons. Where will it get the protons from? Stroma. So, it will bring the protons from the stroma and make them enter into the lumen. So, we have already two types of electrons, sorry, protons already deposited in the lumen. Come to the third one now. We have an enzyme, its name is NADP reductase. The name of the enzyme is NADP reductase. This is present on the stromal side of the membrane. Stromal side, the outer side of the membrane. So, along with the electrons that come from the acceptor of electrons. Now, we had some electrons which were accepted by whom? Which were accepted by the electron acceptor of PS1. Protons are also necessary to reduce NADP to NADPH. Two things are needed to reduce NADP to NADPH+. Plus. What are those two things? Listen carefully. One, number one, we have electrons. And number two, protons. Just remember this much. So who is going to come into C over here? There is an enzyme. It is called as NADP reductase. Now this NADP reductase <coughs> is present on the stronger side of the membrane. That is the outer side of the membrane. So two things are needed to reduce NADP. That means to convert NADP to NADPH and H. What are those two things which are needed to done? Number one, electrons that come from the acceptor of PS1 and number two, protons. So protons are also needed and electrons are also needed to reduce NADP to NADPH plus H. Now, protons in the stroma within the chloroplast decrease in number. I just told you that this proton transporter is bringing protons from the stroma that is from the outer side of the membranes to the lumen. <coughs> what will happen now? And one more sweating of water is also giving protons to the lumen. So the number of protons will increase in the lumen and the number of protons will keep on decreasing in the which area? Stroma area. And where are they increasing? They are depositing in the lumen. And this is how a proton gradient is created across the thylakoid membrane. Now this gradient will be broken down by the movement of protons across the membrane to the stroma. <coughs> how will this break down? Again the protons will go back to the stroma through a membrane, across the membrane. There is a transmembrane channel. I will discuss it in the next video with you. So the protons will go back to the stroma. So proton gradient is very important because it is a gradient whose breakdown leads to the release of energy. When this gradient will be broken down, when the protons will go back to the stroma, energy will be released, that is ATP will be released. <coughs> so we have done the whole of three in uh, production of ATP. Number one, I already told you, spreading of water, water spreads inside the lumen, protons are produced, they are depositing in the lumen. Number two, I already told you those electrons which got excited were taken by a primary acceptor. The primary acceptor should have given it to an electron transporter, but it gives it to a proton transporter. This proton transporter removes the proton from stroma and shifts it to the lumen. So it keeps on taking protons from the stroma, keeps on transferring it to the lumen. So more number of protons are being deposited inside the lumen. Along with this, we have another enzyme that is NADP reductase. This is also present on the stroma side of the membrane. Now it needs electrons, of course it takes electrons but it also needs protons to convert NADP to NADPH plus H. So this also needs protons, this enzyme also needs protons and these protons, this enzyme is located on the stroma region. So protons need to come back, they need to come back from the, lumen, uh, from the lumen to the stroma. Now proton gradient will be broken down, 
the proton stronger lumen will keep shifting towards the stroma. This is what we say the proton radiant is now broken down. And when this proton radiant will break, what will be released is the energy in the form of ATP. This is what is chemiosmotic hypothesis. A simple way to explain how a proton radiant was created. First, there were more protons inside the lumen and less in the stroma. Because they were coming from the stroma into the lumen and splitting of water was also adding down to the uh, increase in the number of protons. Then because of the enzyme NADP reductase, the protons need to go back from the lumen into the stroma. So this will make the proton radiant and release energy. 